another first for the channel. And to be honest, one I wanted to feature on Rare Whiskey Wednesdays. I mean, sure, it is done in batches currently, but um, still a very limited bottle. And a number of firsts for this innovative brand all will become clear momentarily. Let's drink some whiskey. Rare Whiskey. Welcome to Rare Whiskey Wednesdays. I'm the Whiskey Chaser, Brian, here in Christie's Bar. Look, I'm not gonna lie, I'm be transparent here. I've had this bottle a while, and yes, I did actually misplace it and only recently found it at the back, very, very deep back of my whiskey cabinet, which is very deep, as it turns out, along with some other samples I have uh, from this brand. So more of this type of whiskey will be coming in the next few weeks. I recently did a complete clear out of samples and bottles I've had and came across whiskeys and samples I don't even remember buying, to be honest, and some people sending. So plenty of new and different whiskeys coming on the channel on both uh, the rare side of things on this this episode and on the regular whiskey and whiskey side of things, which is the non-rare side of uh, not reviews that I do. Anyway, this is the Flintlock number three from JJ Corey, batch number three from JJ Corey Irish Whiskey. Firstly, and I do apologize to the JJ Corey fans for the length of time it's taken me to get to one of these bottles and get it onto the show. Um, this is my own personal bottle that I bought myself a few months back when it first came out. Um, and I did genuinely misplace it, along with a ton of samples I came across recently. I quite literally have too many whiskey samples and lost track of a load of whiskeys. I suppose you could say that's a good thing, but not when you misplace certain things. Uh, my whiskey cabinet is very, very deep. And you know what, I wanted to do something different on Rare Whiskey Wednesdays rather than like Irish Distillers or Bushmills or Diageo. Um, we need a proper bonder on the channel and a proper backstory incoming. JJ Corey is quite a famous whiskey brand here at home. Incredibly collectible for a number of years. The majority of their releases were very limited bottlings or uh, bottled for hotels or trades or, or charities, I believe there was one in there. I might be wrong on that one, but um, JJ Corey is the brainchild of Louise McGuan, I hope I said that right, who actually founded the Chapelgate Irish Whiskey Company. Chapelgate Irish Whiskey Company was founded in 2015 by Louise, um, and it's the first modern bonders we've had here in Ireland since the early 20th century. Uh, whiskey bonding is of course the act of sourcing new make spirits from other distilleries and aging, finishing, blending them to uh, your own specific requirements and specifications. Bonding was once a widely done practice here in Ireland back in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. A lot of distilleries at the time didn't bottle their own whiskey. Think Powers were the first to kind of bottle their own whiskey. Um, so a lot of merchants, grocers, innkeepers, and publicans would have had casks lying idle and would bring it to distilleries, have it filled with new made spirit. It would then be left to mature to their own spec and sold at their own will. And nearly every local town in Ireland at one stage had a bonder. And uh, sadly, and unfortunately, the whiskey industry, with the whiskey industry collapse in the uh, late 1920s, nearly all of the bonders were wiped out along with a load of whiskey distilleries. Enter stage left, Louise McGann in 2015. Sick of her corporate job, and maybe just sick of traveling around the world, came back to the family farm in County Clare to cool off and chill out for a while. Her father, PJ, still works the farm, but uh, neither Louise or her brother uh, were going to venture down the road into the farming industry, and as they have ties to the land, they needed to secure the future of the family farm. As Louise spent years in the drinks industry, she set out and formed the Chapelgate Irish Whiskey Company, located now on the family farm. Inspiration for the brand name of JJ Corey came from a local renowned bonder named JJ Corey, there you go, who was located only three miles away in Kilrush. Um, he was a bit of an inventor, a bonder, very well known around the, uh, the local area and even owned a shop which he sold goods that he received from tradesmen in the port that came from all over the world. Kilrush was once an international port. 
I'm not entirely sure how many whiskey barrels JJ Corey have in their warehouses, but seemingly it's up in the hundreds. Um, and I do plan to make a visit up to them very shortly. We now have the gear. Um, I'd love to see the place myself and get to walk around and check things out. And of course I might even get to bring the camera. We have a drone now, we have microphones, we're good to go. Things are going to take off. Watch this space. So the Flintlock, right? Well, the one I have here is batch number three, it says it on the bottle. Batch one and two were totally different age statements. I believe batch one was a 16 year old single malt and batch three or batch two was a 14 year old single malt. Batch one won the best Irish single malt 13 years and older award at the 2008 Irish Whiskey Awards. Batch number three here is a 15 year old vatting of single malts. Not sure where the whiskey originated, but I heard somewhere that batch one and batch two both use stocks that came from Bushmills. I can't confirm that here, but I'm guessing this is also the same juice. They all came from the one distillery, the vattings that went together to make this. So the version here I have is a vatting of six Irish single malt casks, the youngest being 15 years of age and the oldest, I think is in around the 19 years of age. Now I did read somewhere that three casks were used on this or vatting for this, but on the bottle here, it says six casks. Anyway, the addition to that is that it's also been matured in Moscatel barrels for a period that I'm unaware of. Not sure is this the first version they've used Moscatel. I didn't have the other two releases and nor could I find any information online about it. So an ABV of 46%, which I like to see. It's a great starting point for Irish whiskeys. Bottle sizes are 500 mil. And for that 500 mil, you will be paying a high enough price tag of about 110 euros, depending on the stockist. Now, I have most certainly chatted enough about the whiskey and the business and the lady behind the business. And now we have to drink and, and do some notes. And we pour. Running low, I might add. So while I let that breathe, once again, 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, no coloring, cis casts of single malt from the same distillery used here. At least that's what the label says. I also read somewhere else, it was three casks and finished for a period of time in Moscatel Sherry Buds. Priced around the 110 euros, Whiskey is between 15 and 19 years of age. Bottle run of 1,146 bottles. I should also mention in conjunction with JJ Corey being the first modern bonder in recent times, Luis has also invented the subcategory of blended single grains with their Hansen whiskey, which is another one of the part of their core range. Um, and they released Ireland's first whiskey made using agave spirit casks, the Battalion, which was finished in both tequila and mezcal casks. So there you go. Every day is a school day, people. Right, so I have given this a couple of moments to um, breathe a little bit out in the air. And we're gonna do some tasty notes now. So for a 15 year old single malt, yes, single malt, just had to make sure there. Uh, straight away, I'm getting those instantly recognizable uh, malty notes of what I would, what I associate with malt, single malt is apple, with a very slight touch of kind of pear notes in there. Now, um, only slight. What stands out a little bit, and I'm guessing this is from the Moscatel as well, is a touch, a, a hint of like a grape kind of skin note or a grapey note, very juicy. Like I said, I'm guessing that's the Moscatel coming through. Um, there is a touch of a citrus kind of zest off this kind of, bright, vibrant, think that. Um, doesn't come across, I know Moscatel, a uh, little bit drying, but it doesn't come across as dry on the nose. It comes across as vibrant, punchy. There is a little bit of white pepper kind of spice. It's very slight. Um, and there is also a touch of a woody note in there. So kind of thinking, now this is at the very back and this is my nose. Um, so I'm associating a very, very slight, slight at the very back, at the very end is a, uh, that kind of woody, uh, either like a bourbony, sherry, woody note. More bourbony, wood. So I think American kind of oak, wood, that, but just very slight. Maybe not so much of the sherry wood hunt. Yeah, a little bit of a, a bourbon oaky note at the end. Now, what's nice about this as well is I just caught it there in the last nose. 
Over the top of this is a lovely little touch of icing sugar. So a nice little sweetness there. Um, I'm not getting overly prominent vanilla notes or honey notes. It's more of a nice icing sugar sweetness, um, which I quite like when it comes to single malt. So it's not overpowering. So there's not a huge amount of influence here from the Moscatel, in my opinion. Okay, let's have a little sup, let's launch it. Quite sweet, icing sugar, kind of confectionery sweet. It's on the thicker side of things. Um, green apple, definitely meets kind of grape skin. And then that confectionery notes kind of coming from the pear, like almost like a pear drop, but not really that extreme, that kind of sweetness from it. Um, that white pepper spice now does stand out here. And what also stands out uh, from the Moscatel is the touch of nuttiness. Along with that, a little bit of touch of bitterness at the very end. I'm gonna finish this off because there's only a little small stuff here. It should be wrong, not to, it's not to. Yes. So, a little bit of bitterness there at the end, not overly pow powering, oh, prominent in your, um, I guess you could associate that slightly with a dark chocolate bitterness maybe. But anyway, um, nothing there is, is really overpowering in terms of, uh, oh, a bit of orange zest there as well. Interesting. So nothing uh, standing out, overpowering anything. Uh, nicely balanced. I know I used to say that an awful lot, nicely balanced whiskeys, but uh, it is true there. So you, you have your green apples, you have a little bit of confectionery sweetness there, which is, you know, I said on the nose, it was an icing sugar. So then it translates a little bit over to the palate. A um, little bit of nuttiness from the Moscatel. The finish is medium to long, um, and you're getting kind of an almond nuttiness from the sherry, um, that bitterness subsided a little bit. Lots of spice um, that kind of carries through and the sweetness. Mm. So as you can see, I've been a little bit through this. Um, and admittedly, when I first got this bottle, I cracked it. I had a very, very quick sup. This is months ago. And um, to be honest with you, I didn't give it the time of day that it deserved. Uh, I had a quick sup where I was like, ah, and I put it back in the cabinet. Now, when I found the bottle back last week, as I said, when I was clearing out my whiskey stores, um, I decided to crack it and give it another go. Um, and I have to say, you know what? This whiskey really does open up the more you let it sit and the more you drink it. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of the JJ Corey range yet, but uh, this one stands out as one of the better ones in my opinion. Um, I do like the interaction between the Moscatel and the malt. So would I buy another bottle? Um, I would consider it. Yeah, uh, genuinely, uh, the more I drink of it, the more notes comes out through it, the, the more it opens up, the more I actually really do like it. I think the first time I had it, I was wrong about it, and I will put my hands up over that. I don't mind admitting that. Uh, this is a good sipper if you want something a little different. Yes, it's a touch on the pricey side, but you know what? Um, any whiskey I bring on the channel uh, that's Irish, unfortunately, is just pricey, and that's just the way it is nowadays. But. Uh, I would go as far to say that that is a decent sipper for me. Um, I think I was wrong in the past about this whiskey. I'll put my hand up over that. Have you had this whiskey yourself? The Flintlock, batch ones, batch twos, batch threes. Do they differ? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Are you a fan? How does it rate? Do you agree with my notes? And would you buy another bottle yourself? I'd love to hear your thoughts. To me, in my opinion, this definitely deserves a space in Rare Whiskey Wednesdays, and I will do my best to get more of the JJ Corey lineup on the channel in my regular whiskey and whiskey videos. Um, this is my own bottle. You can't try it here in Christie's, but thank you to the lads anyway for the hospitality. These bottles are still available when I checked online uh, yesterday. So that's it. Cheers for watching, and uh, be sure to keep an eye on the channel for some more awesome rare Irish whiskeys that are coming soon. Be sure to keep it Irish. We'll see you next week. Slanja.